everybody, and welcome to episode six of May Google Be With You. I am so excited for today's episode because we are going to be exploring my absolute most favorite Google tool, Google Drawings. In fact, it is like my, it is like my lightsaber, my weapon of creative destruction where I can make graphic organizers, I can make banners, I can make buttons, I can make learning come to life for my students, as well as my students can make some amazing things to put out there into the learning universe, showcasing their learning and demonstrating their learning in unique ways. So today we're going to be looking at Google Drawings and I'm going to be showing you how we can create as educators things to support our students like graphic organizers, posters, templates, as well as how we can use things to create custom banners and buttons and things for our Google Sites in our classroom, which are tomorrow's and Friday's episodes. As well as we're going to show you how students can use Google Drawings to showcase their learning, demonstrate their learning in creative ways. So we're going to jump right in today using Google Drawings. Just note that Google Drawings is not an app, and so you'll need to be able to use a Chrome browser in order to particip participate today. So let's get started. I'm going to show you our major resources that I have attached for you below this video. You're going to be seeing my Master Designing with Google Drawings um, slideshow presentation that takes you through some tools and challenges as well as you're going to see the birthday party loop bag of templates and resources, some that were created by me, some that were created by my bestie in black gold, Mr. Darren Malte, as well as some of our Google ninjas. Now, in Edmonton Catholic Schools, we're really lucky because we have a community of practice called Google ninjas. And these are super cool teachers that want to come and not only go deep into their learning with the Google tools, but they're creating and showcasing and sharing with the rest of us. So super shout out to all of them as well as I'm hoping that there'll be some of you out there in our galaxy far, far away that are gonna be willing to share what you create today with us. In fact, I'm gonna have a sharing challenge tomorrow as part of our Google Classroom episode where I wanna give away some prizes. And so let's get started with Google Drawings. So the first thing you'll notice is my Designing with Drawings presentation is attached at the bottom of this video. And what you're going to see in it is a few different challenges and resources available for you to use with your students. Now, first and foremost, we want to look at the idea that creativity is as important as literacy. In fact, it's a literacy itself. It's a competency that all of us are required to do, whether that's for our academic career or professional careers. We want to be able to show off and demonstrate our learning and make our thinking visible in ways that are unique to us, instead of simply filling in the blanks or parroting what we've learned. As well, by using these free and easy digital design tools, we're leveling the learning playing field amongst our students. We don't have to worry about that death by paper cut. So for example, we're asking students to create these great demonstration of learnings for something in science. Well, you can see that we have some kids that end up with bristle board, inkjet printers, glitter pens, you know, Mr. Sketch markers. And then there's the kid on the left who was lucky to get some old dried out Sharpie markers and find, you know, the back of some paper. I was definitely the kid on the left. And what happens is, is it doesn't really showcase what I know, it just really showcases what I have at my fingertips. And so we want to remove those barriers for our students by giving them equally available digital design tools that also have embedded assistive technology for them to be able to create with. And finally, we have an opportunity to get away from dumpster projects. Those paper projects that we get kids to create, usually only within the context of a school environment. You know what I'm talking about. Those paper plate mobiles, paper threefold brochures, hand-drawn posters. Now, not that there's nothing wrong with any of those tools, but we do want to teach our students digital design because in the real world that we're preparing them for, they're going to need to know how to do basic things like a, a flyer, an infographic being able to design a presentation for their work, uh, simply doing an evite for a party they want to have. And so we need to make sure that they know how to use digital design tools to create professional and clear and informative um, products for the real world. So these are the skills that you're going to get by the end of our presentation today. You're going to be able to know how to use the basics in the toolbar. And really, in Google Drawings, it's just about using shapes, words, images and lines over and over and over again in different combinations of ways. And if you can do those four things, you can do anything. I'm also going to teach you some basic image formatting like cropping, masking, recoloring. 
We're gonna use the side space, the teacher side space, as a powerful teacher tool where we can put things like videos, manipulatives, colors and fonts, all those different types of things. And of course, there's gonna be a bunch of geeky extras today, like shortcuts, using custom colors and fonts, and being able to have access to thousands of icons that kids can use in their designs. Now I get asked a lot, Trish, why would you use Google Drawings? Just do this in Google Slides. You know what, you're right. Every single thing I'm showing you here today, I can do in Google Slides. Google Slides is an amazing publication tool as well. But there are a couple of reasons why I like to use Google Drawings in very specific ways. Google Drawings really does allow me to practice those design skills for the real world. They are very interactive. It's free and easy to use. And just like all the rest of the Google tools, I can have students collaborate and work together in it. It automatically saves in the Google Drive, encourages creativity, and it has that assistive technology built in. Now, when I'm picking between using Google Slides or Google Drawings, there's a couple of factors that help me make my choice. Number one is when I only want one page, one line of sight for students, I don't need all of those multiple pages, I like to work within Google Drawings. As well, Google Drawings is the only tool we have that allows us to have a transparent background. This is crucial if we're designing things like buttons, badges, stickers, or just other shapes to be able to use within maybe other Google tools. I want that transparent background. Google Slides lets us have multiple pages, a few more video options, and of course, there's presentation mode. So just what can you make with Google Drawings? Really, the sky is the limit. You can make manipulatives, you can make graphic organizers, comic books, timelines, you can do math on a Cartesian plane, you can create manipulatives, you can create magazine covers and beautiful art. The list goes on and on for each type of thing that you're able to create with simply repeating images, words, shapes, and lines over and over and over again. Now, one of the things that I've attached for you is what I like to call a Google Drawings playground. This is a Google Drawings template that if you complete all of the challenges, and it doesn't matter what order you complete them in, there's 10 challenges. If you complete all 10 of those challenges, you will know how to do everything with Google Drawings. And so what I like to do when I'm working, perhaps you're working with staff members or you're working with students, is I assign this as make a copy for each of my students in the Google Classroom, and they simply go through each one of the steps to learn how to do the challenges. I have three different versions of that template attached for you on our May Google Be With You Google Drawing site. So you'll be able to see here, I have a superhero playground, I have a Canadian drawing playground, and of course I have a sea adventure. The sea adventure playground comes to our friends in black gold. And so with each one of these different ones, you want to be able to take kids either through a guided drawings experience where you're reading out loud the instructions and letting them do each step at a time, or a self-paced experience. As well, within each one of these, I have little extras on the side space for educators. So for example, in my superhero playground, I have another few templates that are attached for you to be able to play with. So if you wanna simply pause the video here and experience Google Drawings and these few steps and, and do this playground, go ahead and make a copy of one of those templates that I've attached for you just to give yourself some of those mad skills and then you're gonna be able to see me take you through some of the other design features. The other thing I'm going to share with you throughout the videos is shortcuts. I love shortcuts. It lets me design faster. And so you're going to hear me talk about shortcuts in the videos, but just in case you forget anything, just know that in this presentation, I have for you my shortcut cheat sheet. All of the things I like to do to inside of Google Drawings to make my designing easier. The other pro tip I have for you is use a mouse. To be honest, I love the trackpad on my Chromebook. I use it all the time. I kind of have to use it like a Ninja Turtle though with my three claws to try to do things like clicking and dragging and resizing and that takes a bit of practice. So if you're watching this, I strongly recommend you use a mouse. Having a mouse for designing makes me faster and allows me to do things with a lot more at ease. So my goodies for you in the rest of this presentation are simply a series of challenges that you could do to learn all of the different skills of Google Drawings. To be honest, you could take one, each one of these as a simple lesson for at a staff meeting, or you could use them with your students to break apart how to make all of these different things. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. The final thing I have in there for you is a link to all of my Google Drawings resource and my bestie in black gold, Mr. Darren Malte. We both love Google Drawings and we share a lot with each other. And so we've included both school districts resources for you today because there are thousands of them combined. 
Okay, so we're gonna get started with our first blank drawing. And what we're gonna be making together is a spirit animal sticker. The reason I'm starting with a spirit animal sticker is it's a fun, easy way to introduce drawings to anybody regardless of the level that you're at. You're gonna learn some basics of shapes, words, images right from the beginning, which we're just going to use over and over and over again. And as well, you'll be able to see how we can create that as a button, which is a skill we're going to need for this Friday when we're building our Google site. So what I invite all of you to do right now is to open up a blank Google drawing by just going to drawings.google.com and we're going to get started. All right, when you first come into a Google Drive, there's a couple of important things to note. It's hard to see here on my screen just because of the way my recording software is working, but what you should all see is a gray and white checkered background. What that actually indicates is that the background is transparent. There is no color to it. And this is really important when you're designing things like buttons or stickers or badges. And so that we wanna be able to work with today. The other thing I want to tell you about is how we can do a page setup. If you do need something to be specifically printable, like I was going to print this off, one of the things I can do is a file, page setup, and change it from standard to custom. I can now make this whatever size I want in order to be able to print it. So if I was making a poster that I needed to be 8.5 by 11, I could change that here and apply it. Same with 11 by 17, eight and a half by 14. You could even do much larger scale publications. I've actually made poster projects um, for different PD I've put on and I've printed like a four foot by five foot poster simply with things I've designed in Google Drawings. The important thing is to actually do that page setup before you start, otherwise it really makes your drawing all wonky. All right, the first thing we're gonna start with by making our sticker, we're going to put in a shape. Now, you can use the term sticker loosely. We could be making a button, we could be making a badge, perhaps you're trying to gamify your classroom. Maybe you just wanna make a really cool label for a poster that you're working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose my shape and I'm gonna choose the oval. Now, has anybody ever had it? See how like everywhere I move, this oval kind of gets all wibbly and moving around? I don't necessarily like that. I want it to hold its perspective. So my first shortcut for you is whenever you're resizing a shape or an image, hold down the shift key while you're dragging. And what it does is it maintains perspective for you so that you can now get that all lined up. Now, as I'm dragging my shape to put it into position, notice how those red snap line appears. I love these because these little crosshairs tell me I'm exactly centered on my canvas. Now, this shape doesn't have to stay this color. All of my toolbar tools let me customize what I'd like it to look like. So, perhaps I actually want this to be a white circle. My border color, I'd like to be black, but I can also change the border weight on my circle. Looks good so far. Now, I wanna be able to create a dynamic sticker or badge with maybe another layer on top of it. I'm gonna go ahead and put in another circle. Remembering to hold down my shift key, I'm gonna draw another circle and then I'm gonna drag it and I'm gonna use those red snap lines for me to be able to line this up and center it perfectly in the shape I already have. Once again, I can change the fill color of my circle and I can also change the border color. I can make it transparent. And now I have kind of a really cool beginning of a circle. The next thing I wanna show you though, is what if I didn't want that color? We notice whenever we choose colors, it seems like we have a bit of a restricted palette. Well, as you can tell, Trish likes colors. And so <laughs> I want a custom color. I don't wanna be stuck with those colors. So there's an extension that I have called Color Pick Eyedropper, and I've actually attached the link for you below. This is where we can go and pick custom colors by ones we see somewhere else. Let me show you what that looks like. So here I'm on the Color Pick Eyedrop site, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna engage my Color Pick Eyedropper. Now it doesn't wanna run on its own page, so I'm gonna go find a page that has a color that I like. All right, so here I am on National Geographic Kids, and I really love some of the colors that I'm seeing here. So what I can do is I can engage my Color Pick Eyedropper, and wherever I'm dragging it, you can see it's coming up with something called a hex code. Ooh, this purple looks like a really cool color. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select it with the crosshairs, and it gives me that hex code that I'm going to shortcut, control C, copy. Now on your drawing, you're gonna be able to put it in the custom color bucket. 
So here, when I go to the fill bucket, I can see that I have all the basic colors available to me. I can go to my custom color, and I can simply paste the hex code I just copied, and voila, I have a beautiful purple magenta something that was not available to me before. All right, so we've got shapes, we've got colors. Now I wanna be able to insert an image. When I go to insert an image, I have quite a few choices. I can upload from a saved location on my computer. I can search the web. I can pull something from my Google Drive. I can put it in by URL, or kids can even use their camera. Now for teachers in Edmonton Catholic schools, we do not have Google Photos enabled, so this is a feature you can't use. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna search the web. Now thinking about my spirit animal, I think I'm going to look for a bee. I'm an amateur backyard beekeeper, and I think bees are gonna save the world. So I'm gonna go look for a bee. When I go in and I find the bee picture that I want, what's really great is these are Creative Commons copyright free images that I don't have to worry about using. I'm allowed to use these for educational use. Now, first things first, I need to resize this very large bee. I'm going to hover my mouse in the top corner. I'm gonna hold my shift key while I click and drag to maintain perspective, and I'm just gonna bring that down a bit. Awesome. Well, here's some basic um, photo things for you. When I have my photo selected, you can see that I get some more options of tools. One of them is crop image. Another way to crop the image is to just double click it. It gives you some black lines that I can now drag and I would be able to crop my image simply by dragging those lines and getting rid of some of that excess. Now, if you make a mistake whenever you're in here, just remember one of my favorite shortcuts that I use all the time is Control Z. Control Z basically undoes the last thing that I just did. All right, that is cropping. Right beside the crop tool, far away in the galaxy is the tiniest little star. Actually, it's just the really small black triangle, and that means mask image. This, for any of you scrapbookers out there, actually cuts your image into a specific shape. So perhaps for this, I wanna cut it into an oval shape. Now that it's been cut like that, what I can do is I can change the border color. I can change the border weight and I can start to put some more design around it so that it fits even better within my circle. So now I can have a sticker just simply that I'm clicking and dragging and making look really awesome. Again, I can use those snap lines to help me line everything up perfect so it all looks really great. Now, what if I wanted to insert an image that didn't, wasn't this one? I changed my mind. Kids change their mind all the time. Trust me, I have three kids at home and no one ever agrees on anything and everything, and they always change their mind. So what I can do is with the image selected, now that I have it all formatted, I can actually say replace image. Because if I just delete that image, I have to start over. So what I wanna do for my replace image is I'm gonna search the web again. I'm gonna go ahead and look for my B. And when I go in here, I can go and find another bee that I want. I can replace that image. And it just takes on the exact same formatting that I just did. So this is really great if you maybe are creating a web and you just want kids to go around the web and replace images with the proper things. Now, another trick that I like is what if I wanted an image on my sticker that didn't necessarily have a background? I just wanted a bee to go on my purple circle with nothing else on it. Well, I could search for a bee, but I can search for bee PNG. What that will do is it will look for images that have a transparent background. So now I could bring over the bee, and what it'll do is it fits right here on my sticker and I don't have to have a background associated with that particular image. It just will sit right where I put it transparently and I can even line that up. Perfect. Another thing you can do with your images is there's format options. There's size and color and adjustments, but something that's really nice is the idea of recolor. This is a really fun way for students to be able to come in and have a little artistic flair with their stickers by being able to recolor those images. It's also a perfect way if you have an image and you need to make it black and white or grayscale, you can quickly and easily do that. All right, this is looking pretty good. Trish is happy. Now I wanna be able to add my words. How I like to add words is I like to use word art. Word art is a great way for me to customize the type of words I want on the page and not be trapped in a text box. Now, if you're typing more than one or two words, you probably want to use a text box, but this is a quick and easy way to be able to do this. 
So I'm gonna type in the word Trish. I'm gonna make this my, my name. This is my spirit animal. I'm not stuck with this font or this color. I can, with it selected, go ahead and choose a different font. I can change the fill bucket to be a different color. So I can go find something that's kind of a cool color. I can even let this be white. And I can change the border. And if I want to change the size of my words, again, I'm holding the shift key and I'm just clicking and dragging from those corners to change where I want that to go. So I'm going to come down here. Now, a couple of things for you when you're moving things around. Arrow keys are your friends. I can move an arrow key and have things move around. If it's moving too much and I need to move it a smaller amount, hold the shift key when you're using your arrow keys and it will move it one pixel at a time. If we need to rotate something, you're holding the alt key and you're using your right and left arrows. It'll move it 15 degrees at a time. And again, if that's too much, hold down shift and alt while you use your arrow keys to rotate it just slightly. My pro tips for you. All right, I have a great sticker that I'm really, really happy with. I'm gonna use this as a button during our Google Sites presentation on Friday. Now I wanna download this. I'm gonna say File, Download As, and I can download it as a PNG. That means it will maintain the transparent background that I have already available to me. You don't just have to download it as a PNG. I can also make posters and different postcards and, and infographics and, and webs, and I can download those as PDFs. It's completely up to you. But now I have a perfectly available sticker for me that I can use for other things. That's it. That's how easy Google Drawings is. So I'm going to show you the types of things you can make simply by using shapes, images, and words and lines over and over and over again. This is an example of a timeline that was created by one of our Google ninjas, Megan McKinney. She simply used shapes as text boxes for students to be able to go in and add the description to the timeline. If you ever double click a shape, it is now a text box and you can change the words. This is another example from one of our Google ninjas. This is from Sarah Kovac and she was able to make a story mountain based off a traditional story arc. You can see she has a background color, her image, she's used some word art, she's used some shapes, and she's used some text boxes. This is a great graphic organizer for students to be able to fill in as they're creating their stories. I have an example here of a haiku where I have an image in the background and students are able to use the syllable structure to create their words. What's great about this is students can replace that image. They don't have to have something about a mountain. They could change it to any different aspect of nature they're trying to change their haiku for. Another quick and easy way to teach people Google Drawings is to do a motivational poster template. This is a fantastic way for students to learn how to insert an image, change border colors, use text boxes, and word art. And so I love kids to be able to do this. This is a great back to school beginning of the year um, activity where students are going to choose what word is going to represent them this year, you know, as they go along their educational journey. We can also use these for, say, something like math. Students can create a motivational math poster where they find an everyday object and they have to come up with the word that is represented in math and ask a question. What a great thing to hang around for the classroom and kids to have powerful math talks about. How did I do this? Well, I did it exactly like the spirit animal sticker. The only difference is, is I changed the background color. I didn't have it be transparent. Whenever you're on a Google drawing and you right click on the background, you can see the word background. Normally transparent is the default, but if I was to right click on the background, I can now change that to a solid color and that's how I can make a motivational math poster. All right, now I wanna to talk to you about manipulatives. Um, manipulatives are so important, that hands-on learning is so important in the classroom, but sometimes we want kids to have a little bit more practice. Now, if you're like me, you probably spent a lot of hours in your educational career creating Ziploc bags for students to use as manipulatives. There was many a night spent cutting out fraction strips and, and word work words and you know getting all those little pieces together. Then you go to school and you hand them out to the kids and everyone's learning and everyone's happy and you tell the kids, don't lose your pieces, make sure you count them before you put them back in the bag. And then at the end of the class, there's four pieces on the floor and they don't belong to anybody and you just wanna boom, boom, boom. How could they lose them? And then there's no way you're letting them take them home because you will never see that Ziploc bag again. Okay, 
We don't have to go to the dark side on this one. We can create digital manipulatives that allow students to be able to use that hands-on materials digitally over and over and over again. And as well, it's easy to use between home and school. I also love it because there's version history, which means I can actually go into any Google tool and I can see minute by minute keystroke changes of what a child did. So what a perfect way for me to be able to observe process for a student as opposed to just seeing the final product of those manipulatives at the end. So I'm going to show you a math task I have with some Canadian money. All right, so here's a really simple Google drawing I made where I just put in some PNGs of Canadian coins and I have a matching activity for students. There's a couple of ways we can do the matching activity. The first thing we could use is we could use the line tool. When I use the line tool, it gives me a little purple connector. And now what I can do is I can take the other end and I can match it to where I'd like it to go. The line can be adjusted by the color as well as don't forget the weight. So kids are able to do a really fun matching activity. The next thing I like to do though is make manipulatives because as we know if I was to take these coins kids could just drag over one and there we go there's the one answer but we know that that's not how money and currency works. I could have multiple possibilities of what could equal two dollars and so in this case I want to turn it into a manipulative. Does everybody remember the great infinite cloner from the smart board? This is sort of what we're going to cheat and do. Now here's your shortcut of how to do it. You're going to have the image selected or a shape. You could just use the shape, images, words, anything can be selected and repeated. You're going to hold down control D, control D, 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 make as many as you want. You select all those items, right click, align horizontally in the center, right click, align vertically in the middle, and before you click off the stack, put it where you want it to go. I'm going to do that again for you. Control D, 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 D. Select them all. Right click, align horizontally in the center, align vertically in the middle, and put them where they go. What's great about this is now kids have some options to show what they know. Yeah, I could drag over the $2 here to show that that's $2, but I could also just as easily drag over two loonies or a different combinations of currency because that's what I'm trying to show. What do I really understand about currency? Now, what's great about this is, is if you have this assigned as make a copy to your kids in the Google Classroom, you as a teacher can go to the version history and you can now see step by step, minute by minute by minute, what your students were able to do over and over and over again, you can see how long did they spend in it? What, what, how long did it take them? How many different um, times did they try different combinations? That's gonna give you a lot of information. So that's how we make manipulatives. What are other things we can use manipulatives for? Well, things like we can do some magnetic poetry. This is a great word work activity where you can simply use a shape to insert words and you can now have kids come in here and collaborate to put them together. I have some spring magnetic poetry now that there's no snow in Canada. This one was created by Eric Kurtz. And each one of these words are completely editable. So the kids can change the words if they're really stuck, as well as there's some blank ones on the bottom right hand corner. What's great is kids don't have to work in isolation. You can also just as easily have kids share the file and be able to invite one of their friends to be able to work with them. So I can invite my new friend from the MTech team. Mr. Ben Prather, he's going to come and work on some poetry with me today. Now I have that completely done. So that's some of those examples of how manipulatives can be very powerful in letting kids be able to drag and drop their learning. All right, I want to talk to you now about the teacher side space. What's really great about Google Drawings is whenever I'm downloading the final product, anything that was on the side panels of the Google Drawings doesn't get downloaded. So this is a perfect place to put things like manipulatives, instructions, videos. So I'm going to show you a really great project I have called Be Seen on a Magazine. This is where I get students put themselves on a magazine to talk about something fantastic they're going to do in their life. Or alternatively, they could be informative magazines. We've done a whole magazine on the Iroquois Confederacy, as opposed to maybe doing a traditional slide share or a written essay report, they're able to create their own National Geographic about this beautiful culture. The list goes on and on, so let me show you a template that I have for you that I've used that beautiful side space. So here's an example of a magazine template we designed for my daughter, putting her on the cover of Forbes magazine. You can see that this looks very similar to the Kylie Jenner cover. She was able to put that she was a powerful woman in technology. 
Now, you can assign this as a copy in your Google Classroom for your students. They can do things like change the color of the background. They can drag over any of these PNGs um, of different titles and change that magazine. They can also create hyperlinks to things that are maybe they want to go out to outside websites or things like that. I've got instructions for them, fonts for them. I've even included a video. Yes, we can put videos in the side space of a Google Drawing. I'm going to teach you that because it's a very cool hack. If you double click on a video inside of a Google Drawing, it will start to play. So I have an entire episode of how to make a magazine embedded right here. The other thing I have is I have some thumbnails to a whole bunch of other magazines that have been created and you can have the templates to any one of these. Now, how did I get that video on the side space? Well, we know that insert video is not an option in Google Drawings. It should be. Google, if you're listening, come on, we need this. But there is a really cool hack we can do. We're simply going to use Google Slides to get it in there. So let me show you what I mean. So here I have a Google drawing that's been created to teach students about the potential dangers for uh, household hazards. And so what I want to be able to include is I have an awesome video about danger in the household that I want the kids to be able to watch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy the address of this YouTube video. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a blank set of Google Slides. Alright, so we're going to get a new Google Slide presentation open just for the purposes of pasting in this video. We know that Google Slides has the potential for us to be able to insert video, and there's a lot of playback options there, but I don't necessarily want to have to always create in Google Slides. I want my videos to be able to be in Google Drawings. So I'm going to say insert, I'm going to say video, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search for that YouTube video and insert it into my Google Slide. Now, what's fantastic about this, all I have to do is now copy it. I can do that by right clicking and saying copy or using my shortcut control C. Now inside my Google Drawing, I'm just right click pasting or using the shortcut control V and now I have a fully playable video that I can resize and I can add inside my presentation and now students simply have to double click it to be able to watch that video inside their Google Drawing without having to leave that space. This is completely exciting to me. All right, we're coming to the end of our fun in this episode. And what I want to show you now is one of my most favorite tools, and that's the polyline tool. This allows us to do pretty much some really creative tracing to make things like spirit animal stickers, super cool selfies and art, and some Ted Harrison art. And so we can use this polyline tool to trace over top of an existing image to make something really beautiful. It's quite easy to use. Now, what I've included in the bottom of these resources is the full video from Josh Pomeroy. That's how I learned how to do this technique so that you can go a little bit more in depth of how he creates these beautiful pieces of art. So here I have for you, this is a Ted Harrison example that's from my friend Darren Malte. And what they did is they have some examples, some little thumbnails of some actual Ted Harrison art just docked in that side teacher space for kids to be able to emulate. Then using the polyline tool, the kids are able to trace over top that image. Here's another example that's not Ted Harrison, just of being able to use grayscale tracing over top of a, a selfie, over top of a photograph. So what we have for you is we've included a Ted Harrison template. We've also included a color palette that students can choose from. This image doesn't have to be the image you use. It's just a placeholder. Students can replace the image with perhaps a different image from the web. Somewhere maybe they want to put an Anukshuk, they want to do some other um, place in the Arctic. They're absolutely welcome to replace this image. Now, if this is the image I would want to do, I'm going to start using my polyline tool and it's just like making a little dot to dot. Every time I click with my mouse, it is going to make a little connector and hold my shape there. Now, what will happen if kids don't complete the shape? Don't worry about it. They're just going to be able to click off of it and they'll be able to delete that shape. That's not what I want. This is also a little harder to see. So here's my last shortcut for you. Control Alt Plus. Control Alt Plus lets us zoom in without really messing up our browser. So now I can see a little closer into my image. So I'm just going to start being able to trace along with small little bits because I want to capture that color and I'm going to start building on layers of things. So as you're connecting the dots, hopefully you're hearing all these little mouse clicks. Obviously, I'd probably take a little bit more time doing this, but uh, 
you know what, it's your art and you can do what you like. So I'm coming around and I just wanna get back to the beginning and complete my image. Now what I can do is I can use the fill bucket where all of those custom colors have been preloaded and I can change my border color to transparent. And so now I have this really great layered on effect. I can keep going. Now I take my polyline tool and I'm gonna do another little piece of the sky and we're gonna create all those beautiful Ted Harrison layers that he so magnificently creates in his art using different medium. And so I'm even gonna go over top this a little bit. Trust me, you'll see why in a moment. So I'm making that layer and I'm just keep going. There, I have another layer. I'm changing that fill bucket. Maybe I'm gonna choose a little bit of a different color, get rid of that border. Now what I can do is I can change the order of these. If I want this sunset to be on top of the other layers, just know that I can right click and change the order, or I can use the control and the up and down arrows to bring something forward. To zoom back out again, control alt minus. Now look how I'm starting to create a beautiful Ted Harrison rendition of this particular image. That's it, that's Google Drawings, and you guys are Jedi masters of graphic design. So below there's lots of templates and ideas for you. If you make anything really awesome, share it with me, and actually tomorrow, I'm gonna get people to share and give away some prizes for it. So thank you for joining for me for episode six, and I'll see you all tomorrow for Google Classroom. Bye everybody.